I know I left you in the city with notions that I was going to hang out with my friend from Australia in Portland. So instead of boring you with meals and half-hearted attempts at filming urban nature and then driving back north to Canada, crossing the border via the ferry, I pick you back up here, back here in British Columbia, Canada, on one of the southern Gulf Islands, places that I love, facing a new challenge. It's tough, so much harder with a spear to aim for head. Yeah. I don't always have the patience when trying to learn something new, to go through the process of being a beginner, being inexperienced. The unknown ahead of me can be frustrating. Tucked into the trees. I went to the wooden boat show, and then I went to Poland. that's about it. I wouldn't be able to do the hard things that I'm trying to do in my life without the community around me. My adventures, my creative endeavors, learning new things just wouldn't feel possible. I just literally turned up in the nick of time and drove straight on. Look how gorgeous that is. Uh, but this is like the two sides of her. One was like this innocent girl in a giraffe onesie holding like a little stuffed animal, and then the other one was like this like girl interrupted. And then we had our burgers on this beautiful homemade focaccia bread. Nobody wants to eat the slug. Nobody wants to get a brain disease. I heard they taste like bananas. Yeah. Well, banana slugs, but this is not a banana slug. Ah, it could this be. the black one. The only way to find out. We have a pet slug, and we decided to feed it zucchini, and he's actually he's hilarious, like mowing kind of, down, kind of chomping on it. Cheap one I bought from the stand because my other one, the other one just I had a nice tripod, but the top bit broke. Mm. Probably has another thing going on too. Oh yeah, you're yeah. always, it's always two sides of a story totally. and this kind of thing. Hello and good evening. I am so excited to be back here on the island with my beautiful sailing and diving friends. It feels really special to continually build friendship and connection and hang out. And we were just talking over dinner about how it feels like I'm a local because I'm here so frequently and you know, being there just enough and not too much and I've been everywhere since I saw them last so we have stories to tell. They've been traveling and sailing and I've been driving and traveling and diving in other places and meeting new people and it feels really precious and special. And then to come back here and be like, okay, let's go out in the boat or let's talk photography and filmmaking and YouTube. I'm really grateful to have friends who I can talk this kind of shop with. I'm staying at a beautiful 
oceanfront campground which is super quiet and super chill it is really beautiful we had dinner outside we barbecued and then sat down and watched the sunset and there were deer walking around the campground just chilling <sighs> but we just finished dinner and now it's time for bed <sighs> so good night good morning oh, so beautiful just had my first me week work meeting for the morning sitting here and it is now starting to rain so I'm gonna go and find somewhere in the dry to sit but what a beautiful office for today there's my beastie tucked into the trees I'm moving spots today which is good timing because there's not much solar coming through these trees, but we're going to move to the site over there and then the solar panels will top up. Yeah. Turtle love. Turtle, turtle, turtle. I totally lost you. I was scared there for a second. It's 
I, as soon as I saw, I'd keep keeping an eye out for you so that as soon as I saw you, I was going to wave. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, this, this area for you, I'm like, I'm Oh, shit! <laughs> again. What are, what are we making? So we've got a rockfish and we've got it dipped in flour, baking powder, some Johnny seasoning, and a little bit of a za'atar, which is in uh, Lebanese, put that shit on everything type of seasoning, which I really like. Delicious. And then we're going to toss some beer in the rest of it and we're going to toss it again and then we're going to fry it. We have fish tacos. Fish tacos. Fish tacos, and I am very, very excited about that. Get some of your beer. You can. <laughs> the beer that you gave to me to drink. Yeah, but once it hit your lips, it was yours. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, here we oh, go. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Well, you can actually smell this at heart, even when it's not. Yeah, so if you just if you guys just want to turn on your smell o vision, get yeah. a whiff of that. Let me see if I can find out what's in it. Yep. Thyme, sesame, sumac, and oh, there's a way more herbs than that. Yeah, good luck with this with pronouncing those. Yeah. There we go. Cool. It smells so good already. So this is a white fish and it's very small. So it's only going to be in the fryer for two minutes, maybe. Yeah. And that's probably still going to overdo it. So actually, I'll just have to keep an eye on it. I'll get you another plate to put them on. Yeah. Mm. The ocean has blessed us. Blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> this fish taco is amazing. Lion's mane jellyfishes have lost all of their tentacles. It is the end of season for them. The beginning of fall, they start to die. And they look like this. Right now, it is currently low tide, so we'll be hopping in the ocean very soon. And after a whole week of rain, we have some gorgeous, gorgeous sunshine again, which feels like quite a relief so yeah down here at the marina looking at all the boats and I have seen Barry his channel is Sailor Barry and then Simon is just down at his boat and he'll be back very soon and we will be getting suited up taking the dinghy out to the islands and going for a dive <sighs> just it gives me so much peace and relaxation in my body to be near in and around the ocean so. right I have I have finished uploading my video and now I am all geared up in my wetsuit and I have enjoyed the slow pace of today taking some me time and downtime going for a walk this morning <sighs> feels like a nice little break for my system and a slowdown that I really needed. So I'm excited to be in the ocean again. Oh. So the tail is if, as if it was going down for a big dive. 
So there'll be a couple minutes before it comes back up again. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. visibility was not great. The first few meters looked like an out of focus blurry haze, but as you dropped deeper I started to see a fish, a kelp greenling. All right, I'm ready, surprise me. Okay, remember how I was telling you so powerful? Yes. I'm just like it floating went... along, it's like China rockfish, China rockfish, China rockfish. I come around like, okay maybe I shouldn't film that long. I couldn't believe it. So big, I'm just like, right away. Camera's still rolling. In the brain. And he's still twitching and wiggling. And I get up to the surface. And I stick my hand in the gill. And just as I do, he wiggles like crazy. This thing pops out because it never even went all the way through his head. Because it's that big. And so I just over the shoulder, <laughs> threw him in there. Oh, and, and, yes! Oh, so Woo! good. Oh, my God. <sighs> What a thrill. That's amazing. All so right. it is, is it? One shot, one kill. <laughs> oh, Mood instantly here. improved. What's that? Mood instantly improved. <laughs> Unfortunately, I need to get a better camera set up because I can't hold the camera and the pole spear at the same time. So I've tucked it into my weight belt and it does look slightly funny in these videos. I'm sorry. Eventually I'm gonna get a head mount. I keep trying, trying again, and frequently missing. It is a frustrating experience and takes me out of really enjoying the nature and beauty around me. But I have a goal and I want to be able to feed myself from the ocean. Kelp greenlings startle easy. They are very beautiful and very fast little fish, and so they often see me well before I see them. Amongst the sea urchins, rocks and starfish, I think I must have tried about five or six times. Maybe it's the same fish, but I kept swimming along the shoreline. At this point, my breath hold is starting to wane, but I got him. Slowly going to the surface. I should have, as you see here, put my hand over the end of the pole, so keep the fish on my pole spear. The exhilaration of finally catching a fish. But what I didn't get on camera is that the fish got away. I had not grabbed hold of the other end of the pole spear. And again, this is another frustrating learning lesson. The fish wiggled and pulled itself off of the end of the pole spear. Unfortunate for the fish, but again, it returns to be part of the cycle of nature, feeding other fish. Simon was using a spear gun, which is quite dissimilar to the pole spear and how it is used and fired. Towards the end of the dive, he offered me a go with it, and while it feels very unnatural and I don't really like it, there were no fish around for me to even take a shot at. Holy moly! That's a big fish! Oh. Have to see what we have. Oh, shit. The biggest damn fish you've ever seen. Oh, 
first, yeah. first time, first time with the with the spear gun. First thing I see. Oh, really? Bang. That's Fish for dinner. <sighs> what a great day fishing. We have two lingcod, which is our limit. I also uh, speared a kelp greenling, but I didn't grab the end of my pole spear, and so it escaped. So gotta, I'm sure one of these other fish will make it dinner. You gotta start aiming for heads too. And it's tough, it's tough so much harder with a spear to aim for head. With, yep. the, with the gun, it's like right yep. in the head. And easy, I think easy. the distance that the pole spear can shoot yeah. versus what the spear gun can shoot yeah. It's a lot different too. Um, people don't, I didn't realize, but when you're spear fishing, you really need to get the spear in the head. Because every other part of the fish, they can tear it out. Yeah. It's just the head that they can't, and you don't really want to be fighting it. So ideally you hit them right in the brain. Especially when you get a fish <laughs> Especially when you that a, a big. 30, 35 pound monster. Yeah, oh my God. you want to have that through the head. Look at, that. Look at that beautiful now, there's piece. There's a, a bit of belly here that we need to cut off, but. That's so good. Anyway, so cut this head off for you. Yes, please. I will figure out making some sort of fish head soup. <laughs> no, you're gonna go around BC with a rotting fish head in your fridge for like a in my couple of. Freezer. <laughs> oh, I've got a salmon head in my fridge right now. That needs to go. <laughs> I think that's you, not uh, me. All right, well I'm projecting. <laughs>
Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Not bad. I'm hungry. Like I haven't eaten since breakfast, so like, and we went diving. <laughs> Somehow, some all of those activities makes anything taste absolutely amazing. Mm. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this episode i hope you enjoyed coming with me to the ocean under the ocean and feeling within you the frustrations as you face your own challenges and make progress to overcome them we can do this this will change us and we will become more resilient more willing and able to take on change if you enjoyed it please give this video a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button it really means a lot to me more than that uh my patreons i could not do this without you i will see you over on the community and until next week see you later goodbye